to Christmas Eve. We're just delighted to have you come and worship. For our Christmas Eve service, you'll need uh, your candles for that last song we're singing, Silent Night, and a, and a lighter or matches, and maybe something warm and, and homey to be drinking, like eggnog or hot cocoa. And of course, gather around your loved ones. Let's worship. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. How are we doing? Merry Christmas, everyone. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is the light no darkness can overcome. We gather tonight to celebrate the great light of our salvation. With the heavenly host we sing, glory to God in the highest heaven. In Christ, God's word is made flesh and lives among us. With the shepherds, we tell of the wonders we have seen and heard.
May the grace and truth of Christ be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you with, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. guys that likes to help Santa around Christmas time so that it makes his life a lot easier. So what I got here is this is where I live even the whole year round. And I want you to notice that we've decorated the front of the house. We've also got decorations a lot in the inside of the house. And why do we decorate? We decorate when we have celebrations like Halloween, Easter, and Christmas, obviously, but we want everything to look nice so that we can enjoy the season. And as you see, we've done a lot here. But there's one thing you, you really have to understand about this season is this season is not about me as much as it is about some, someone else. So what I want to ask you a question. Is the name of this season Santa Miss? No, no. It's Christmas. And the reason it's Christmas is because of the baby child here born, Jesus, on Christmas Eve for to be the light of the world in the future. So this is actually Jesus' birthday. So for everyone, happy birthday, Jesus, and let's say a little prayer. Thank you, God, for sending us his son to be our savior, to give us the things that we spiritually need to survive and hope everything else falls into place. Amen. Again, happy birthday, baby Jesus.
Pastor John Buchanan is retired now, but for many years he served as lead pastor at Fourth Presbyterian in Chicago. He recounts one of his favorite Christmas memories. It was a day long ago when attempting to counter all the commercial hullabaloo about Santa, he sat down at the kitchen table with one of his youngsters in the middle of December and undertook the project of assembling a cardboard cutout creche. Stable, manger, baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph, sheep, cows, shepherd, and the wise men. Fold on dotted line, place tab A in slot B. Sounds simple enough. Well, it was a disaster. Nothing worked the way it was supposed to. The figures were decidedly difficult to assemble and they kept bending and falling over. The stable leaned to one side. The manger kept toppling over and cardboard Jesus kept falling out. The kitchen table was littered with torn and bent and useless figures. Apart from scotch tape, this was not gonna work. Well, John says, upon surveying this disastrous scene on the kitchen table, the four-year-old who was his partner and to whom John was trying to explain the real meaning of Christmas, the four-year-old said, so daddy, where is God in this mess? It remains the quintessential Christmas question. Where exactly is God in this mess? Christmas is messy. As a child, my family would participate in binge baking. Powdered sugar and walnuts and dates, sugar, butter, cinnamon, anise, nutmeg, molasses, vanilla, cloves would be scattered all over the kitchen counter. As we prepped and baked, Springerly cookies using my great-grandmother's cookie mold. Date bars, snickerdoodles, thumbprints, molasses cookies, Russian tea cakes. They were those delightfully nutty little balls uh, rolled in powdered sugar. Well, one of my tasks was rolling those little balls in powdered sugar. And invariably, I always seem to get more powdered sugar on me and on the floor than on the cookies. But the end result was always delicious. Our house had that wonderful Christmas cookie smell, but the process was messy. Opening our Christmas gifts was equally as messy. In my family, the gifts started piling up around the tree several days before Christmas. So by Christmas morning, we had already identified which packages were ours and of course had shaken them all to get a clue as to the contents. We could hardly contain our excitement on Christmas morning. So when the time came to open gifts, wrapping paper went flying everywhere. I must add that we tried to stop long enough to see what our other family members were getting. But by the time all of the presents were opened, wrapping paper and bows and ribbons and boxes were strewn all over the place. Christmas is messy. Of course, those experiences are not unique to my family. I'm sure you have your own stories to tell. Truth be told, even for the Holy Family, Christmas was messy. The mess of an unplanned pregnancy, the mess of a hurry up wedding, the mess of being summoned to return to Bethlehem for a census, the mess of a long journey, the mess of no place to stay for the night, the mess of giving birth in a stable, Think of the worry and anxiety that Mary and Joseph had as they placed Jesus in a manger. Will the animals wake him up? Will he be safe? The messiness of the nativity 
meets the messiness and the chaos of our lives and our world. Tonight, as we look into the manger, we see not only the face of a baby, we see the face of God. When we peer into the manger, we see the concrete reality and the power of God's love. The baby reminds us that God loves us and the world so much that God couldn't stay away. God had to come to be one of us, to be one with us, so that we would know once and for all that no matter how messy and complicated life gets, God understands, for in Jesus, God has experienced all of what it means to be human. Ted Loder tells about an encounter he had during a rough patch in his life. His mother was dying, his dad was depressed, his own marriage was hanging on by a thread, his kids were angry about it, and his professional life was on the rocks. Well, one night as he walked down Lombard Street in Philadelphia to meet his daughter for coffee shortly before Christmas, he saw a home that had dedicated their entire front window to an elaborate nativity scene. The painted figures were about three feet tall, and each figure glowed because it was lit from inside. There was a group of shepherds, there were three wise men, angels, assorted animals. They were all gathered around Mary and Joseph, who stood side by side. Ted said that all the characters seemed to be looking right at him as he stood there on the street. But even more intriguing was that there was no manger in this scene. No infant Jesus in the window. He pondered the scene and then realized that the old story was being told differently. He writes, in effect, the street was the manger and I was standing right in the stable. The glowing figures were looking expectantly out on the street for the Christ child. Out on the street where the reality is that the beasts are motorized, the creature's milk comes in cartons and plastic bottles, and the wool of sheep is woven into the suits or overcoats worn by the passers-by. Shepherds are sleeping on steam grates. Wise men are dishing out food in soup kitchens. Some folks are carrying political protest signs or joining coalitions or serving in churches, doing what they can to change things. So someday there might not be homeless people or hungry children or addicted parents. He goes on to say, I stood there with tears in my eyes, with a force that lumped in my throat. I realized that just where I was standing, the Christmas miracle happens. In the street, where human traffic goes endlessly by, where men and women and children live and limp and play and cry and laugh and love and fight and worry and curse and praise and pray and die. Just there, Christmas keeps coming. Silently, insistently, mysteriously, just there in all the hopes and fears and joys and sorrows and mess and beauty and vulnerability of life. Just there. On a night long ago, a Christmas miracle happened in the form of a teenage mother giving birth in a stable to an audience of sheep and cattle 
and it continues to come to us in whatever situation we find ourselves in. Where exactly is God in this mess? Right here in our midst, Jesus, our Emmanuel, God with us forever and always. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. We pray for those with COVID-19. Strengthen medical workers. Guide all world health organizations and governmental officials in the distribution of the vaccines and calm the fear of those who are reluctant to receive the vaccine. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. 
Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expectant parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The heavenly chorus sings, glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of Christmas, we are mindful of the supreme gift that you gave us in a manger at Bethlehem. Humbly we offer our gifts of service and possessions in joyful thanksgiving for the love you have shown us. Accept these gifts for the sake of your Son who was born to us. Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with the good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the Word made flesh. Amen.